Hey guys, Jay on Zero. How you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land. <laughs> Whatever part of the world that you are in. Uh, sorry about the uh, background noise. That's going to be the exhaust band. We are here in our pantry. And we are going to show you the latest additions to our home place here. Uh, which are uh, our new bloodline of uh, ringneck pheasants. So let's get a look down here and show you. Uh, we had just uh, received these this morning. We ordered them from Murray McMurray Hatcheries. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the uh, description box to the website. These are jumbo ringneck pheasants. Um, we've had our other ones for four years now. Uh, the other breeding pair is still doing good and they're still producing. Uh, but it's just time for us uh, every few years to change our bloodline out and, uh, and get some, uh, some different breeding stock. And uh, of course, not all these will be kept as breeders. Some of them, once we grow them out, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll go ahead and use them for meat. Um, and then we'll keep the, uh, the biggest and the best and the best behaved and so on for our new breeders. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the, uh, the brooder that we've got here. It's just an old water tub. Uh, it's a pretty large one. I think it's a 35 gallon, roughly. And we're going to keep them in here in the house so we can keep a real good eye on them because uh, as, as usual, Murray McMurray is a really good hatchery and they delivered really good, healthy chicks. Uh, but I'm a little disappointed in the postal service. It took them a, little, it took them a day longer to get here than what uh, they normally do. So these little guys were in their box in the uh, the hot mail trucks. It's uh, we're in June and it's pretty hot, so they were in the extra day, and we really wanted to make sure we could, took real good care of them and had some uh, some good quality water and feed waiting for them. Uh, first thing is we have our heat lamp up here on top. We're going to try to keep these chicks right around 100 degrees. You see, we haven't had them out of the box very long. They're kind of cold. They're piling up underneath the light. But as they warm up, they'll get out and about a little bit more. Uh, we're going to try to keep them right around 100 degrees for the first 10 days. And then after 10 days, we can start dropping the temperature up to about 5 degrees per day until it, it gets to be the ambient outside temperature. And uh, this is a pretty big investment for our home place. Uh, this was, you know, uh, about $150 or so uh, investment. Uh, but it's going to, like I say, it, it's exactly what it is, an investment for the next several years of hatching and, uh, and selling pheasant chicks and, uh, and meat because we enjoy the pheasant meat. It's really tasty and uh, it's, a, it's a really good thing to have. They're, they're really easy to take care of, uh, especially if you're already used to taking care of chickens. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Okay, as soon as we got them home, we pull them out of the box. And we'll take and dip everybody's little beak into the water here. This water, we had added uh, an electrolyte additive to the water. Because with them being, uh, well, they were dehydrated when they got here. Honestly, they were a little dehydrated because of the extra day. So we dipped everybody's beak so that they knew where the water was and could get their first drink. And their first drink would have some electrolytes in them, which would help them perk it up just a little bit. We've got a little bit of gravel. Some folks will use marbles, but we use just little pieces of gravel in the water. That way you see, you can see how they like to get in the little water tray and run around. And sometimes if there's one in there and another one jumps on top of him, he can't get out or they'll start slipping around and sliding and uh, they'll get really wet and can't get out. So we put the rocks in there to help them get out easier, to get more traction and to make the water level not as deep as what it is without the gravel in there. It gives them a little more, uh, it makes it a little more shallow to where they're not getting completely soaking wet. Because like with anything else, wet babies usually equals dead babies. So, and then we have a feeder over here with a quart jar feeder. And uh, right now we're using medicated feed. All these chicks will come, they come from McMurray Hatcheries with, uh, with a certificate of health where they've been inspected by a veterinarian um, before they ship them out um, but you know it is a big hatchery and uh, we just kind of err on the side of caution and feed them uh, medicated feed which has some antibiotics uh, that the chicks need to get started with uh, we'll feed them that for probably a week or so and then switch them to regular feed uh, about the time we move them out of this brooder into a little bit bigger brooder and uh, we have a cover on it because they are pheasants. They jump and fly really early. As soon as they get feathers on their wings, they're able to fly, and they will fly. Trust me. 
Uh, this here in the middle is just uh, an old dust feather duster that has uh, you know the feathers on it, and we leave it hanging underneath because a lot of the chicks will like to kind of huddle underneath the feathers. It kind of mimics you know mom in the nest. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember who I got this idea from, uh, and I wish I do so that I could give them credit. But it works really good for chickens and for pheasant chicks. Uh, they, they do seem to like to uh, go underneath it and kind of cuddle like they're brooding under their mom. Uh, and once they warm up a little bit and get a little bit more active, there will be quite a few of them that will get underneath there and sleep. So, these are the uh, newest addition to our home place. Uh, this is how we are taking care of them. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an expert. I'm not even kind of like a birdieologist or any of that kind of crap. I'm just a dude who raises pheasants. And uh, these are some of the little things that we do when we get our birds in to help them, uh, you know, help them be uh, healthy and uh, and have a better chance of making it and growing up. There are there were a couple of these chicks that were really weak when we got them in. Um, so after we dipped their beaks and they were still kind of laying down very inactive, we just kind of take our finger, dip it in the water, and get a little drop, a little bead of water on your finger and then rub it along the side of their beak and you'll see their little beak go like this and they'll get the water in them and that's how you can ensure that they're getting a drink and getting some of those electrolytes in them because these uh... The, those trips, those shipping trips are pretty hard on these little guys and uh, when you first get them in you've got to be really attentive with them or you're going to lose some and if you see some that are looking weak uh... you see some that are having trouble um, you know make sure you kind of set them aside and keep them warm Give them a little bit of dipping your finger in the water and give them a little bit of extra water. And uh, nine out of ten times, with that little bit of extra care, they will go ahead and, uh, and perk up and come out of it. Uh, McMurray Hatcheries has a 48-hour uh, guarantee, meaning that when your birds arrive and two days after they arrive, uh, if you have any losses, then uh, they, can, uh, they will work with you and replace them or credit you them or whatever it is that you want to do. So, uh, very happy with uh, Murray McMurray hatcheries, uh, and we received them all. We didn't have any uh, that were uh, lost in shipping. A couple, a couple of them are pretty weak. Uh, we're going to have to baby them, but that's okay. That's what it's all about, tending the critters and learning how to be better at what we do. So, I hope this helps. Uh, for any of you all who are interested in raising pheasants and getting started and starting with babies, um, this is how we do ours when we receive them uh, being shipped and this is how we do ours after we hatch out you know, a batch of them in the incubator this is the same setup that we use uh, even for chicks that we hatch when we move them from the incubator to the brooder so there you have it guys uh, I hope this helps uh, like I said I'll leave a link to the hatchery give you a last little look at them and we will do updates on them periodically uh, maybe when we move them from brood to grow out, we'll do a, an update. They grow pretty quick, and they get pretty active pretty quick, too. So, anyway, I hope this helps. You guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Y'all have a great rest of the day. God bless. Me. Buzz, buzz, the end.